Good morning. Good morning. Please get your authorized of God. Authorized of God version of the scriptures. Commonly referred to as the King James Version. Please today, as we go through the scriptures, please follow me along in the scriptures, word for word, verse by verse of what we will be looking at today. If we come to a portion of scripture today that you are unsure of, the context, pause the video, be a Berean, search the scriptures daily whether these things are so, okay, or whether these things be so. Also, make sure you follow me along because as I constantly tell you, Sometimes my mouth will go quicker than my brain, and sometimes I skip a groove. So, make sure you follow me along, okay? Follow me along in the scriptures. Today we are going to be continuing with our discussion, if you will, about the satanic charismatic faith. And you got to remember the term charismatic is an umbrella term. And many of these demonations out there of the satanic Christianity fall under it. But today we are going to be primarily focusing on these wicked Pentecostals. Okay, you heard me right. And I know that there are uh, several of you who are who claim to be Pentecostals. Um, you will no longer be ignorant of the heresy that you are involved in. Okay. All right, and if you want to continue in this heresy, uh, well, we know who you truly serve. All right, take offense and then take a gate. You got to remember the thing about heresy. Heresy has one, they, they all have many things in common. But at the root of it, of all heresy, there is one undeniable root, tenon, that they all share. And what is that? Yea, hath God said. Yea, hath God said. And the thing you got to remember about heresy, brethren, is like, for example, um, uh, the heresy of hyperdispensationalism. Okay? Hyperdispensationalism says that there is one body to the Jew and one to the Gentile, right? But like all heresy, like all that is uh, linked onto Satan, and his church, Roman Catholicism, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, her ways are movable that thou canst not know them. Okay? Heresy changes. Heresy morphs for the worse. You know, uh, Catholics like to say, well, Catholicism has never changed. Hey, you pre-Vatican II Catholics out there, what do you have to say about your boy Jesuit Francis? Huh? Saying that they ought to make... Um, um, homosexuality legal. Okay? What you got to say about that? Um, no, Catholicism gets worse with time. Okay? And then once we, the body of Christ, the Church of the Living God, get redeemed, Satan is going to have basically unhindered reign to do as he will. Okay? But you got to remember, heresy changes, morphs. Okay? You got to remember that. But when it comes to this thing of the charismatics, like we discussed in the previous video, they all share a lot of the same tenets. But with the Pentecostal charismatics, and um, also thanks on to you who recommended putting hashtags in the title of the video to help override the shadow ban that has been put upon your servant. <laughs> Devils. But... In talking about the charismatic, i.e., I'm meaning more the Pentecostal, and the flavors are the apostolic, uh, the assemblies of God, vineyard, all right? They all share a lot of the same tenets. But it seems with the Pentecostals and most of these charismatics, the big mama of them all seems to be this speaking in tongues. Now, of course, to the charismatic, whatever flavor you are, a water baptism is a requirement to them. And we addressed that in the previous video, which will be in the description box of this video. 
But it seems that probably the big daddy, the big mama, excuse me, of them all, is spiking in tongues. And again, my southern brethren, no offense. You, you can make fun of my uh, Yankee accent all day. Go right ahead. I don't care. Okay? But the spiking in tongues, speaking in tongues, hmm, seems to be the biggest thing. And what happens is the speaking in tongues becomes a badge of pride with people. I've seen it because I was once involved with the charismatic uh, oneness Pentecostals, okay? Um, I've seen it firsthand. Well, not everybody has the gift of speaking in tongues. What is that? That's a cut at you. It's like, well, you're not special enough. You're not, you know, you're not one of the upper echelon, and I'm sorry to steal that devil's catchphrase. But you're not of the upper echelon. We're, we're, we're a little bit more dignified because we can speak in satanic jibber jabber. Blah, 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 blah. Okay? This is a, it is a badge of pride onto these people. And it is totally unscriptural. We're going to talk about this. And also, in order to justify this heresy, Inevitably, they have to get away from the scriptures because within the scriptures, and we're going to see this with a rare exception of in other tongues, the scriptures say speaks speaking with tongues. And see, other uh, like Bibles, okay? Like the NLT I saw is really bad for this. Uh, say speak in tongues okay the NIV is just trash okay and um, all of all the Bibles are trash this is the scripture okay but uh, inevitably they have to get away from the scriptures in order to justify their heresy uh, the oneness Pentecostals that I was involved with uh, they used the authorized version. Yes, they did, but they were nuts. I saw the people uh, crawling around on all fours having the uh, seizure-like activity. I've seen that with my own eyes, okay? I've seen that. Horrific, horrific. But this thing with tongues, what they call speaking in tongues, okay, is satanic. It is of the devil, Okay? This is not a milk video. This is me. Now, you're, you're Pentecostal. You're charismatic. You're a vineyard. You're apostolic. You're an assemblies of God. Okay? You're a Methodist. You're even a Baptist. There is evidence of Baptists even doing the blah, 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 nonsense. Okay? Follow me along in the scriptures. Let's see what's said the scriptures. Okay? All right? Now... We're going to look at tongue and tongues in Scripture, okay? And we are going to see that both tongue and tongues has two meanings according to Scripture. Tongues singular and tongues plural, okay? But see, the tongues plural is the focal point for these devil heretics, okay? So that is what we are going to primarily focus on. But we are going to establish that tongue, tongues, has two meanings in scripture, okay? We are going to establish this. Now, tongue singular appears in the authorized version 126 times. Within the New Testament, it appears 31 times. Tongues, plural, appears 34 times in the authorized version of the scriptures, 25 of those times within the New Testament, okay? And like I said, the charismatic has a lot of doctrinal problems, okay? Yes, babes can get messed up with it, but if you're claiming to be a Christian for decades and you're a, a Pentecostal charismatic or a charismatic, um, I doubt you're saved. I don't think you're saved. But, Let's begin in Genesis chapter 10, okay? Genesis chapter 10, okay? This is already now 10 minutes. 
All right, you you devils, you can't handle uh, meat, go away. This is not milk. All right. Genesis chapter 10. We're going to be starting reading verses 1 on to verse 5. Now, when you search the scriptures, uh, more often than not, when you're looking up words in scriptures, in the scripture, you will find that often it seems that the plural form of a word will appear before the singular form of a word. Very interesting and fascinating that our Lord does that. Why he does that, I don't know. It's his book. Uh, it's his word. He can do what he wants. But this is an exception to that. Genesis chapter 10, verses 1 on to verse 5. Now, these are the generations of the sons of Noah. Shem, the Asiatics. Ham, the Africans. And Japheth, the Europeans. And unto them were sons born after the flood. The sons of Japheth, Europeans, Gomer and Magog and Madai and Javan and Tubal and Meshech and Tiras. And the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz and Rephath and Tograma. And the sons of Javan, Elisha and Tarshish, Kitim and Dodanim. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, every one after his tongue, singular, after their families in their nations. First appearance, tongue. And what is it associated with? Every one after his tongue, after their families in their nations. What is it associated with? The mouth, speaking, stuff like that, okay? Now, let's skip ahead to verses 15 on to verse 20 in Genesis chapter 10. Now we're going to see the first appearance of the plural, okay? Genesis 10 verses 15 on to verse 20. And Canaan begat Sidon his firstborn and Heth, and the Jebusite, the Jebusite, Jebus, before it was called Jerusalem, it was known as Jebus and the Amorite, and the Ger Gergeshite, Gergesite, excuse me, and the Hivite, and the Archite, and the Sinite, and the Arvidite, and the Semarite, and the Hamathite, and afterward were the families of the Canaanites spread abroad. And the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon, as thou goest to Gerar, unto Gaza, as thou goest, unto Sodom, and Gomorrah, and Atma and Seboim, even unto Lasha. These are the sons of Ham, after their families, after their tongues, in their countries, and in their nations. Okay? So we see tongue, uh, the singular appear before the plural here, in Genesis chapter 10. First appearance of the word tongue, singular, in Genesis 10, verse 5, and the plural tongues in Genesis chapter 10, verse 20. Okay? And they all have reference onto speaking and languages. Okay? And while we're here, let's look at verse 31 <clears throat> again, and tongues, the plural here. These are the sons of Shem, after their families, after their tongues, in their lands, after their nations. That's verse 31. Now, as it was said, now our brother yesterday, my best friend, uh, who is really good at analogies, um, came up with this analogy because within the scripture, you'll see language and tongues, okay? I'm speaking with tongues right now but I am speaking the language of American English, okay? Our brother from overseas, he speaks in whatever the, with the tongues of his nation, um, he speaks with his tongues, with tongues, but he speaks the language of his nation. He also can speak American English, okay? All right, so tongues and tongue. Tongue at this and tongues 
is languages. But I am speaking with tongues right now, and I am speaking the language of American English. Uh, like our best, like my best friend, our brother Alexander B. Hartley said, and he's great at analogies, and I am not. He said, "You have a Ford, and you have a Chevy. They're all cars, but one is a Ford, and one is a Chevy." Great analogy, okay? And also, I forgot to mention before we started, this video is a collaborated effort, okay? Yesterday, myself and a couple of brethren, literally a couple, we got together, and the four of us, the Lord, of course, fine-tuned and um, hammered out this video, okay? So thanks unto those brethren, and of course, all thanks go on to our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, okay? This is not a one-man show, okay? This is not a one-man show. Yes, you see me, my face, and my creepy smile, and my annoying voice, okay? But there, this is not a one-man show. And thank you on to those beloved brethren whom the Lord used that we were able to come up with this. This is a collaborated effort. Thank you, brethren. So, now let's go to Exodus. Now we're going to concentrate at the, at the beginning here on tongue singular. And we're going to see that the second uh, definition of tongue according to scripture. Tongues is what we're going to be primarily focusing on, but I want us to establish that there are two meanings for tongue and tongues, one of the actual physical tongue there and of speaking languages, okay? We are not, when, when you say about the tongue, okay, most people who have any knowledge of scripture whatsoever, right away you'll think of what? James. The tongue is a little member, and it's, uh, uh, you know, in the book of James. We're not going to that because that is the obvious, all right? That is the clearest. We're not going to that, okay? We don't, you know, because I want to show you other places to show you that tongue is that and also speaking, okay? Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 on to verse 12. And Moses said unto the Lord, O, o my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue, okay? And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb? Dumb can't speak. That's what dumb means. We often like to associate dumb having no brains. No, dumb means being uh, means not being able to speak. Okay? Or deaf. Or the seeing or the blind. Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. <laughs> like before I started this video, Lord, be with this mouth of mine, <laughs> okay? So we see here in Exodus chapter 4, verse 10, tongue is a reference unto what? That, the actual physical tongue, okay? Now go to Exodus chapter 11. Exodus chapter 11 we are going to be reading verses 4 on to verse 7. Exodus 11, verses 4 on to verse 7. And Moses said, Thus saith the Lord, About midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the mill, and all the firstborn of beasts. And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. But, uh, but against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. Oh, in that verse alone, there's a whole ton of instruction and righteousness for us. God of distinction, okay? God is a God of distinction. 
but we're not going to touch on that. But we see here, not a dog move his tongue. Reference onto what? The actual physical tongue. Okay? Judges chapter 7. Judges chapter 7. Judges chapter 7, we want also verses 4 on to verse 7. Found this one to be very interesting. Judges 7, verses 4 on to verse 7. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, This shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, This shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So he brought down the people unto the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Every, now check this out, every one that lappeth of the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth, to tie in there with uh, Exodus, which we looked at, okay? Him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, every one that boweth down upon his knees to drink. And the number of them that lappeth, and the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were three hundred men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. So bowing down like a dog and blah, 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 lapping the water, were civilized, if you will, took that and went like that. Okay? And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that lapped will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thine hand. And let all the other people go, every man unto his place. So, the singular of tongue. We saw in Genesis chapter 10 that tongue is a reference unto speaking. And also that tongues is also a reference uh, to the actual physical tongue, as tongue also is, which we have just seen. But tongues is also a reference, can be a reference unto this, the physical tongue and speaking. Okay? Absolutely, absolutely. Speaking languages, okay? Like it, like we had said, I am speaking with tongues right now. I am speaking the language of American English, okay? All right? Again, the analogy of the car. They're cars. One's a Ford and one's a Chevy. Distinction in the notes. Distinction in the languages, okay? All right, you with me? All right. Now, Tongues, plural. After, after that in Genesis, Psalm 31 for tongues, plural. Psalm 31. Now we got a few of these that we're going to go through. And we're going to show you, we are going to see that tongues, like I said, is can be, just like tongue, be a reference onto the physical tongue or speaking languages, okay? Psalm 31, verses 17 on to verse 20. Now pay attention to this. Let me not be ashamed, O Lord, for I have called upon thee. Let the wicked be ashamed, and let them be silent in the grave. Let lying lips be put to silence, which speak grievous things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. Now see, we're leading up to this, we see lips speaking, okay? Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Okay? All right? This is a process that we have to go through. Okay? We are going to be eventually getting to you, what you devil charismatic Pentecostals uh, hold as your big main doctrine. We're going to get to that, but we got to look at this evidence first. Okay? Psalm 55. Psalm 55. Verses 3 on to verse 9. Now, right away. Check this out. Because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, 
for they cast iniquity upon me. In wrath, they hate me. Okay? The voice of the enemy? Yeah. My heart is sore pain within me, and the terrors of death are fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me, and horror hath overwhelmed me. And I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then would I fly away and be at rest. Lo, then would I wander far off and remain in the wilderness, Silla. Wait, wait, am I, am I reading the right one? Psalm 55? Yes, I am. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues. For I have seen violence and strife in the city. As, a, as, as I said unto the brethren yesterday, I have actually seen with my own two eyes a man who had his tongue cut in the middle. And he had a pointy tongue, unlike mine, that's uh, concaved or rounded, okay? And it was creepy. The guy mm, stuck his tongue out and they were going like us. It was creepy, man. It was just creepy. I've seen that before. Ugh, ugh. With my own two eyes. You know, it's like, it's, whoa! You know, it's, it's creepy. Creepy, okay? Psalm 78. Psalm 78. Two verses. Verses 36 and 37. 36 and 37 in Psalm 48. 78. Excuse me. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth and lied unto him with their tongues. You are because you say you are, huh? Yes, yes. The fool says in his heart there is no God. But with their tongues, with the language that they speak, they will never utter with their mouth that they don't believe in that, uh, that there is no God. But in their heart, the fool says in his heart that there is no God. Okay? Verse 37. For their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. Okay. Now, Psalm 140. Psalm 140. Psalm 140. Verses 1 on to verse 5. Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man which imagine mischiefs in their hearts. Continually are they gathered together for war. Mm -hmm. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Hinge that thing in verse 3. We're going to touch on that a little bit. Adder's poison is under their lips. Shila, or pause. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent man who proposed to overthrow my goings. The proud have hid a snare for me, and cords. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set gins for me, Shalah. Hmm. And, of course, today, because the Church of the Living God, the body of Christ, is on the earth, Depending on what nation you are in, um, Satan can't outright readily attack the Church of the Living God unless the Lord gives him permission to do so. You read about that in Job. So how does Satan combat the Church of the Living God? Oh, with devils who have 500 channels who are uploading videos 24, like every other hour. Okay, they like uh, Brother Alberto Rivera had mentioned about they use a whispering campaign and use many certain tactics to attack, okay? Usually, it has to do with the tongue, with tongues, with languages, with speaking, okay? Usually, usually. 
Yes, Satan can be allowed to attack the church of the living God physically, and depending in on what nation you are in, that happens. I know that the church of the living God in like Pakistan and Saudi Arabia and, uh, and over there, they get physically uh, attacked. They get physically murdered, okay? Yes, here in America and like Canada and uh, what else, that physical thing hasn't happened yet, okay? But it eventually will. But looking at verse 3 again here in Psalm 140, they sharpen their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips, Shila. And as our brother, our beloved brother, um, uh, brought to my attention yesterday, it's like, duh, Romans 3, verses 10 through 14. On to verse 18. The least favorite verses of these despicable, easy believism devil heretics, okay, <laughs> who say that the, the pure gospel is found in Romans 3. Yeah, and they sidestep uh, side Romans 3, verses 10 on to verse 18, okay? Yeah. Romans 3, verses 10 on to verse 18. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. That includes you. That includes me. Anything that good comes of me, it isn't of me, it's of the Lord. Because there is none good but God. Okay? Man is not good. Okay? Man is not good. There is only one good. God. Their throat is an open <laughs> sepulcher. <laughs> sepulcher. I couldn't resist. Sorry. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues. They have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Babes may have struggles with their tongue. I know if you drop a, a couch on my favorite big toe, unfortunately, in the heat of the moment, I might utter a profanity when blood squirts all over, okay? But if you're of the church, of, if you claim to be of the church of the living God and someone scratches you, you stupid bloke, okay, and you go off on profanity, uh, yeah, yeah. We all slip, you know, you might drop a, a couch on your favorite toe, you might miss the nail and hit your thumb, okay, unless you're Smiley Dave who, you know, whatever, but let's continue whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Hmm. And reference back again to Psalm 140, verse 3. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips. Selah. And also now... Here's another interesting tie-in about that thing about the serpent. Um, snake, by the way, is not in Scripture. Serpent is, but snake is not in Scripture. Okay? It's not. In a Bible, you'll find the word snake. Proved that yesterday. You don't know what I'm talking about. We were looking in uh, Bibles at certain verses to compare them with the Scriptures and how messed up the Bibles are. But Job 20, verses 12 on to verse 16. Check this out. And this is playing into how these devils speak the satanic jibber-jabber. And they call it, and they think it's actual a known language. Well, it is a known language unto the devil that it's jibber-jabber. Okay? But let's continue. Job 20, verses 12 on to verse 16. Though wickedness be sweet in his mouth, Though he hide it under his tongue. 
you from the coasts of England. Yeah, yeah. Certain people from Canada, hey, yeah, yeah. People from out west, yeah, 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 yeah. Big smiles from under their tongue, yeah, yeah. Let's continue. Though he spare it and forsake it not, but keep it still within his mouth, yet his meat in his bowels is turned. It is the gall of asps within him. He shall suck the poison of asps. The viper's tongue shall slay him. Viper, a type of serpent, type of serpent. And of course, of course, when we're talking about this, the serpent, the viper. Let's go to the other tie-in here. Revelation, Revelation. Not revelations, okay? Even that heretic, uh, Jace Robertson, gets that right. Why are you hating on the Robertsons? Address that in another video. Never mind. Uh, revelation 12, verses 9 and 10. And that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent that was in the Garden of Eden, called the devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. Jesus Christ, Jehovah saves. Christ, the anointed one. Or anointed one. Okay? For the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and night. Hmm. And isn't it interesting when you run into these charismatics, uh, these Pentecostals, whatever flavor of charismatic you are, and they believe that you got to get dunked in order to be saved, and the evidence that you have the Holy Ghost is that you're blah, 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 blah. Okay? Uh, when you go to expose them to the scripture for the devilment that they are doing, they accuse you. Accuse you of not having love. And of course, which we're going to address, you blaspheme the Holy Ghost. You're in danger of hellfire. Let's shut up. Shut up. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. When you go to expose the devil and his ministers of righteousness and all his heresies, they respond with accusation, don't they? Don't they? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Watch out for, again, for these smooth-talking people. Watch out for them. Okay? Now, let's go to Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66. Now, Jeremiah, Brad. We are going to go to Jeremiah. But Isaiah 66... We want verses 17 and 18 in Isaiah 66. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the mist, eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. For I know their works and their thoughts, you can't hide anything from the Lord. He knows what you're thinking. Okay? He knows what you're thinking. Even you devils. He knows your thoughts. Now, try to wrap your head around Jesus Christ, who is God our Father. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Walking around knowing what people thought. Thought of foolishness is sin. Yeah. Anyway. Verse 18, for I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues and they shall come and see my glory. Reference on to, of course, the second coming. All right. And now Jeremiah chapter 9, which is interestingly enough before Jeremiah chapter 10, where you are warned about paganism and not learning the ways of the heathen. You know, wrong. All right. Jeremiah 9, 
verses 1 on to verse 3. Oh, that my head were waters, and mine eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodging place of wayfaring men, that I might leave my people and go from them, for they be all adulterers and an assembly of treacherous men. Our Lord delights in mercy. He would rather be merciful and gracious. But because he is fair, because he is just, because he is perfect, he, ha he, can, he will not acquit the guilty. The only, the only thing that you can do is go to the Lord Jesus Christ and seek him, his forgiveness, okay? All right? His forgiveness. Verse 3. And they bend their tongue like their bow for lies. Mm. They bend their tongue for bows like lies. Mm. You got to remember, Satan uses distraction, sleight of hand, if you will. Satan wants you to believe that uh, what he is and his religion is about these stupid Anton LaVey Satanists who wear the little horns and the goth-looking people who stab dead cats and whatnot. No, 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 no. True Satanism is personified in Isaiah chapter 14, where ultimately Lucifer, son of the morning, I will be like the Most High. True Satanism is Roman Catholicism, religion, okay? You got to remember that. But Satan wants you to be distracted in what he is not, where true worshiping of Satan is Catholicism and all her Horus daughters, okay? And the charismatic faith and all those that fall under that umbrella is a daughter of the Hua, okay? Now let's continue. And they bend their tongue like their bows for lies. Rat poison is 95% good food. It's that 5% that'll kill you. You know, if you deviate so far from the truth, okay, even easy believism heretics will be like, uh, oh, dude, that's a little too obvious. We got to say something against you. But if you're sounding really good, really good, and then you're going off, going off, going off, going off, going off, like that evil devil from out west of me, from out northwest, sounds so sweet, sounds so sweet, but deviates, 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 to the point where his smooth talking is so that you cannot directly pin him, but there are a bunch of little dots, okay? That's how it works, okay? Because if it's brazenly obvious, then you got people who are openly uh, devil worshipers, who are openly heretics. Even they have to be like, okay, dude, yeah, you're pretty obvious, okay? So they bend their tongues like their bows for lies. It bends, bends. Ways are movable, Okay? You know the parable of the sand and the stone, or the sand and the rock? And remember, sand is comprised of what? A bunch of microscopic little stones, little microscopic stones like that, okay? All right? But they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth, for they proceed from evil to evil, and they know not me, saith the Lord. In Jeremiah chapter 23, Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 28 on to verse 32. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream, like a lot of these charismatic Pentecostal devils do. And unfortunately, a lot of them seem to be women and are dear Dear uh, beloved um, Hemetic uh, brethren or uh, those of Ham, the Hemetic women seem to be a very big proponent used by Satan on that for some reason. Okay, for some reason. Okay, I don't know why. But, and you know, you check out the playlist on this channel, Refuting Charismatic Heresy. We have several videos on that. 
prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Chaff that gets blown away. Wheat, the bread, okay? From wheat you get bread. The chaff, the fake, uh, these dreams that these charismatic Pentecostal or whatever flavor you are of with their satanic devilish dreams and whatnot, okay? Those who have his word, lowercase w, okay? Verse 29. Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Hold your place here. Not part of the notes, but got to make this uh, tie in. Uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. Joints and marrow are part of what? A body. Okay? A person is spirit, soul, and body. Okay? And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Okay? Go back to Jeremiah chapter uh, 23. Verse 29 again. Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor, like the charismatic Pentecostals and whatever flavor of charismatic you are. Okay? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, he saith. Which is what these guys do. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams. Like so many of these charismatic devils here on YouTube and other platforms, where they see a dream of the future with Trump, or your best life now, uh, your uh, financial breakthrough, and all this nonsense. Okay? Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord. And do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies, and by their lightness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore shall they not profit these people at all, saith the Lord. Okay? Now, within the Old Testament, we have seen how our Lord uses the word tongue and tongues. Tongue has two meanings, as we have seen. One for the physical tongue. You can check James. We purposely aren't going to James because we want to see elsewhere. Okay? We want to see elsewhere. We also see that tongues can also be a reference onto the physical and also to that which is being spoken. Okay? Tongue has two meanings according to scripture. And it's defined by the context in which it appears. Okay? We had to go through that first to establish this. Now let's get to the New Testament. To uh, Mark chapter 7. Okay? Now you got to remember. The biggest error of all that these guys, these devil charismatics do is they don't rightly divide the word of truth. They don't, okay? They tell you, ask a charismatic, when did the New Testament begin? They will say, with the birth of Jesus, okay? The New Testament began with the death of Jesus. The death, burial, and resurrection, and the blood shed on the cross, okay? That brought in the New Testament this dispensation. The gospel accounts are in the books allotted as the New Testament. Okay? But before the death, burial, and resurrection, the law was still binding. Okay? And you read in Hebrews chapter 9, the New Testament begins with the death of the testator. Okay? That is the big, that is the number one of the charismatic, whatever flavor they are. Okay? whatever flavor they are. And from that stems all the rest. All right? But Mark chapter 7, verses 31 on to verse 
35. Now here we're seeing our Lord. We're going to see a distinction also of the physical tongue. Okay, we're going to see this. We're looking at this to show you that this um, meaning of tongue, tongues, maintains its two meanings depending on how our Lord uses it within the context. Okay, Mark 7, verses 31 on to verse 35. And again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, he came on to the Sea of Galilee through the midst of the coasts of Decapolis. And they bring unto him one that was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. And they beseech him to put his hand upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers into his ears and he spit and touched his tongue. Okay? And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said unto him, Ifafatha, that is, be open. And straightway his ears were open, and the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spake plain. Now, anybody, Jimmy Durante, could see that that is a clear reference onto the eh, singular tongue. Okay? All right? And that is defined by how context, okay? All right. Now you got to remember doctrinally, this is still under the Old Testament. He had yet to die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures and shed his blood for, you know, to make the atonement for our sins. Okay? Okay? But that distinction, that's why we are looking at that. And of course, you can read in uh, John chapter 5, verses 1 on 2 about the Hebrew tongue. Okay, and also in Acts chapter 1, verse 19, okay? Okay, we're not going to go there. But now, we covered this in the previous video. We're going to cover it again in this video. Mark chapter 16, okay? Mark chapter 16, verses 14 on to verse 18, all right? Now, the charismatic loves this portion of the scripture, okay? Uh, because they go to this to try to show and prove that you need to be dunked in water. And we, we cover this in the previous video, previous video, uh, Baptism Saves. Like I said, we'll be in the description box. We're not going to get too deep in it, but we're going to touch on it because we have to. Okay? This is something that, the, and you got to remember too, this is after the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? After the shed blood on the cross. This is this current dispensation, which is by grace through faith. And we discussed this in the previous video. Okay? Watch that video if you have any questions. If you're going to comment about Mark 16 in this video and not watch the other video, I'm going to remove your comment. One of my moderators, please do so. Ain't got time for that if you don't want to hear the truth. But, Mark chapter 16, verses 14 and verse 18. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. And you go to, hold your place here, you go to Luke chapter 24, uh, hold on, hold on. Hold your place there. Go to Matthew chapter 10. Okay? Matthew chapter Matthew chapter 10. To the Jew first. Like I say, we covered this in great depth in the previous video, but we're good. we got to touch on it here. Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 on to verse 6. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. Matthew chapter 15, verse 24, one verse. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay? And go now to Luke 24. Luke 24. 
We want verses 46 on to verse 48. Okay, like I said, covered this in depth in the previous video, but we're touching on it again here. Luke chapter 24, verses 46 on to verse 48. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, and ye are my witnesses, and ye are, excuse me, witnesses of these things. And of course, Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 1, verses 16 on to verse 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first. And also to the Greek. A Greek is a Gentile. Okay? For therein it is written. For therein, excuse me. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written. The just shall live by faith. So, now go back to Mark chapter 16, verse 15, where he says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, beginning at Jerusalem to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. The Greek is a Gentile. And as we discussed in the previous video, Acts, okay, is a book of transition. The kingdom of God, which is a spiritual kingdom, was first primarily offered on to the Jew alone. Okay? To the Jew alone. Okay? It was this dispensation. Okay? Which is by grace through faith. But as the kingdom of heaven was offered on to the Jew, the kingdom of God was first offered on to the Jew. But when Jewry rejected the kingdom of God, the gospel today in Acts chapter 7 us Gentiles were were uh, prophesied already in Isaiah and uh, in Isaiah to be grafted into the tree of the Jew, already prophesied. But you see in Acts chapter seven when they stone Stephen, the Gentiles are then grafted in. Same dispensation, okay? That's where the um, hyper dispensationalist, the easy believism devil, likes to deceive you, okay? All right? It was, is this dispensation. Okay? All right? What changed was, what changed was that us Gentiles at that time after the uh, total rejection, rejection of Jewry of the gospel. Individual Hebraic Jews, yes, can be saved. Absolutely. But as a whole, Jewry rejected the gospel. Hence, us Gentiles being grafted in, as it was prophesied in Isaiah, okay, as it was prophesied in Isaiah, that we were grafted in to make the Jew jealous. And I can assure you, they're jealous of all these stupid charismatics, okay? But, all right, that's what was going on. Any more questions? Check out the video in the description box about baptism. If you're not going to do that and gripe, you're out of here. Ain't got time for your stupidity, which is willful ignorance. Let's continue. He that believeth and baptized shall be saved. It begins with believeth. Baptized is a reference onto how John, okay, was baptizing the Jews for the baptism of repentance onto the kingdom of heaven. The same thing went on with them being baptized onto the kingdom of God, okay? It is not a requirement for salvation within this dispensation. It was an identifying thing. That's what it was. Again, check out the link in the description box, okay? But he that believeth not shall be damned, okay? And this does not mean that there's one to the Jew and one to the Gentile, okay? This was settled in Acts chapter 15, okay? And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. You see that happening in the book of Acts. Okay? In, in my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak 
with, with new tongues. I remember looking in the New Living Translation, it says speak in new tongues. The scriptures say with. Even the ESV gets that part right. But then again, they're messed up in everything else, okay? But they shall speak with new tongues. Again, how I, how I alluded to earlier, you know, um, you're of the church of the living God. Your tongue, your language is one of the first things that uh, gets cleaned up. Unless, of course, you drop a big couch on your favorite big toe and blood goes everywhere and you're hobbling. Or you, you miss the nail and decide to hit your thumb. Okay, we have those moments, yes. Unless you're Smiley Dave or one of these perfect English uh, coastal living devils, okay? <laughs> but anyway, anyway, okay? In my name, they shall cast out devils. These were sign gifts for the Jewish people, by the way, okay? They shall speak with new tongues. The Lord will clean up your speech. As a babe, you might, you might, you'll, you'll stumble at first uh, when you curse or something. And, it's, and a f cursing, uh, swearing, you know, F-bombs and that, it's offensive. It's like, oh, I don't want to hear that. It discredits anybody, okay? It does. I mean, if you make a, if you know, you drop a big uh, uh, couch on your favorite toe or hit your ham, hand with a hammer or whatnot, it happens, okay? It does, unless you're Smiley Dave or the, the holy guy from out northwest of me, uh, uh, northeast of me, excuse me, okay? But, okay, this, they shall speak with new tongues. The Lord within you, who has sealed you until the day of redemption, once saved, always saved. Another tenet that the charismatic Pentecostals are against, okay, because they don't rightly divide the word of truth. The Lord will change the way you speak, okay? This is not talking about you speaking in a... Okay? And a good uh, verse on this, thank you to uh, our dear brother for pointing this out. John chapter 8, verses 43 and verse uh, 47. See, you and I as the Church of the Living God, and brother, this morning with the email that you said, that you gave me, perfect example. You and I, here in America, we speak with tongues in the language of American English. You and I can go up to a Christian speaking the same language, but yet they don't understand what we're saying even though we're speaking the same language. Speaking with tongues, okay, eh? with tongues, speaking with tongues, the same language. A known language, by the way, not satanic, devilish, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we're going to look at that. But yet they don't understand what you're saying. Verse 30, uh, 43 on the verse uh, 47 in John chapter 8. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are, are of your father, the devil. And the lusts of your father ye will do. And of course, that's a reference onto Satan. Satan wants to be like God. Okay? All right? He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his, of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not because ye are not of God. And of course, a perfect example is when you run into these Christians. Okay? All right? Especially these charismatics. Okay? I'm speaking with the tongue of American English. We're speaking the same language, but yet they don't understand a thing I'm saying. Why? Why? Because they're of their father, the devil. Okay? 
And lost people, when the Lord is saying, come on, come on, pulling them, guiding them, okay? When the Lord is guiding someone, okay, the Lord is seeking to prick their heart. But what happens most of the time, especially nowadays, when you speak the truth of the scripture, especially against devils like the charismatic Pentecostals, they get cut to the heart. And then you read Acts chapter 7 and look what happens when people get cut to the heart. They stop their ears and they gnash with their teeth and they stone you. Okay, now back to Mark chapter 16, verse 18. They shall take up serpents, okay? And we, again, we talk about this in depth in the previous video. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And the take up of serpents, okay? The su southern snake handler guys, okay? <clears throat> you read about Paul, a viper fastens on his hand, okay? And he shakes it off. All right? And they drink any deadly thing. You do not have one reference at all in the scriptures within the New Testament of any of the apostles, the disciples drinking a cup of poison. It is surmised that John was at first given a cup of poison before he was hauled off to Patmos or whatever. There is no scriptural evidence to support that. Okay? There is none. But then again, this is the sincere milk of the word. Okay, wash them in the water of your word or whatever. Okay, so drinking, uh, and if they drink any deadly thing, meaning you're of the church of the living God, you got the scriptures, and you, you are uh, being versed in the scriptures and search the scriptures daily, whether these, these things be so, you're not going to be distracted or led astray by, say, a Bible, which is of Satan. Okay? Okay, and see, that's another thing. Look at Billy Goat Graham, who's in hell. He started out with the scriptures, but then as he progressed, he went away from the scriptures and was promoting the living Bible, the hippie Bible of that disgusting movie, the Jesus movement movie or, movie or whatever, that has that idiot from that Mormon created and influenced TV thing, The Chosen, okay? Who also, Billy Goat Graham, promoted the New Living Translation and was passing out the mess, the message, to people at his crusades, okay? If you're a truly saved, born again, converted of the Church of the Living God, the Lord is not going to guide you away from his word and tell you it's okay. You can read whatever you want to read, okay? If I want to, if I'm bored, okay, I got scriptures throughout this place, and my brother, my best friend will verify that, okay? But, you know, if it's like, oh, uh, pick up a Bible and read that just for as long as it's like, oh, man, this is disgusting, okay? But see, we won't be affected by that. God is not going to guide you away from the scriptures, God is not going to tell you, dear friend, to go ahead and go to a Bible instead of the scriptures because they can't understand it. God is not going to have you dumb down his word so a devil can understand it. That's what Christianity is. Christianity is teaching religion onto lost people. Okay? That's what it is. All right? But this in Mark chapter 16 is all reference on to sign gifts. And again, look in the previous video. Now for you charismatics, let's go to your <laughs> beloved Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Now, it was to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. There are those out there who want to tell you that there were Gentiles present in Acts chapter 2. There were no Gentiles present there. Or else you would have clear contradiction with the scriptures. Okay? There were no Gentiles present in Acts chapter 2. But let's read. Acts chapter 2, verses 2 
uh, verses 1 on to verse 13. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And the charismatics take this out. Holy Ghost fire! Holy Ghost fire! And they go to Matthew chapter 3, okay? But see, context, people. Matthew chapter 3. Look in the margin of your scriptures. I'm sure there's a reference for Acts 2 verse 3 for Matthew chapter 3. Look in, you know, look in the margin right there. Look for Matthew chapter 3. It has verse 11, doesn't it? Or if you're one of those, if your set of scriptures is like a, a Holman set of scriptures that has that after the verse reference, I, I don't like that. I don't like that after the verse scripture. Give it to me in the in the middle or or at the bottom, okay? But it says Matthew 3, verse 11, doesn't it? Why doesn't it, it include verse 12? What am I talking about? Matthew chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. John the Baptist speaking. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost, comma, and with fire. Colon. Colon. Okay? Meaning, let's continue. Because where, where do you devil, uh, Pentecostal, whatever you are, charismatic? You like to see, see, Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Verse 12. Remember, the references are not inspired, dear friend. The words, scriptures are inspired. The references and the notes are not. Don't forget that. Whose fan is in his hand, and he, shall, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into his garner, those that belong unto him, but he will burn up the chaff, those who are not, with unquenchable fire. Remember how we looked at uh, what is the wheat, the chaff to the wheat? Okay. Chaff, those who, are, who belong unto the Lord. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Chaff, those who are not of the Lord, those who do not belong unto the Lord. Wheat, those who do. So, what verse 11 in Matthew 3 is talking about is him making a distinction, okay? Jesus Christ is the judge, okay? All right? He, uh, he, you're going to give an account to the Lord Jesus Christ. Your belief on that is irrelevant. Whether you're an atheist or whatever, it doesn't matter. You are going to give an account of yourself to God. Whether it be at the judgment seat of Christ, with those of us who get redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble, or at the great white throne, okay? You are going to give an account of yourself to Jesus Christ, who is God our Father. Your belief on that is irrelevant, okay? That's just the way it is. You're going to give an account of yourself to God. And this is talking about how Jesus Christ is our judge, okay? And it makes distinction. He will thoroughly purge his floor and gather the wheat into the garner. Wheat, those who are of him. But will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. So, go back to Acts chapter 2. So, when the charismatic talks about Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire. Uh, no, they're deceiving you. And in, in the reference here, where it says Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, okay? And see, it's right there too. Oh, oh, wait, no, it's not there. Not in this one that I see yet. But in most of them, 
in most of the, the margin of your scriptures, you will see that. Matthew 3, 11, but they don't add verse 12. Because verse 12 defines what verse 11 is talking about. Okay? Now let's continue in Acts chapter 2. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. With other tongues. Even as I remember the disgusting NIV 1984 edition has with tongues there. The NLT doesn't. Says in tongues. See, in order to promote their satanic heresy, these Pentecostal charismatics have to go away from the scriptures because the scripture says with tongues. Okay? Not in tongues. It's with tongues. I am speaking with tongues right now. The language of American English. Okay? Let's continue. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were all, and they were dwelling at Jerusalem and they were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because every man heard them speak in his own language. Now, you got to remember, there were no Gentiles present. These were all Hebraic Jews, okay? Or else you're going to have a contradiction with the scripture to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. You read the book of Acts, Paul, the apostle unto the Gentiles, went to the Jew first. Romans chapter 1, we already looked at it, okay? It was to the Jew first. And the sign gifts were there for the Jews, okay? You got to remember that, all right? But there were Hebrews born in other places, okay, who were Hebrews and spake with the tongue the language of wherever they were born. And you also got to remember that un uh, uh, outside of America, it is quite common to this day that other people of other nations can speak more than one language. Uh, the, the, the young man from, uh, from Croatia, he speaks his native tongue, his tongue, the language of his kindred, but he can also speak American English, okay? All right? It's not uncommon unless you're an American for you to speak other languages, okay? <laughs> All right? So keep that in mind. All right, now verse 7. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? In our own tongue. Okay? There's Hebrews who are born in New York who can speak with the tongue of American English but also can speak with the tongue of their native people's Hebrew or Yiddish. Okay? This is not that difficult. All right? But see, Satan, through the charismatic movement and all these the de not demonations that go under that umbrella of the charismatic stuff are deceiving you. Okay? So, these are Hebraic people, Hebraic Jews, who are Hebrews, who were born in other nations, who could speak wherein we were born. And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? There are Hebraic people who were born in New York City, in Chicago, who speak the tongue of American English and also can speak the tongue of Yiddish Hebrew. Okay? Known actual languages. Okay? 
This is not rocket science. All right? Now let's continue. Verse 9. Now here are the languages known. Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontius and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya and about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. Cretes and Arabians. And the thing about Jews and proselytes, what is a Jew will be in the description box. Writing that down so I don't forget it, okay? A proselyte is a convert to Judaism, okay? Is a, is a convert onto a religion or whatever, okay? If you want to generalize it, okay? Uh, you got to remember, every Hebrew born is not a follower of Judaism or of the Church of the Living God or whatever, okay? That's not... Watch out for that one because the devils will try to confuse you on that as well, okay? Let's continue. Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Now, again, these are Hebraic Jews that were born in these places who were able to speak these tongues languages, okay? Like I've already explained, there were no Gentiles there, even though these are primarily Gentile languages, aren't they? Okay? Watch out for these deceptive devils. Okay? Verse 12. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. And when you talk to a charismatic devil, and you tell, and I've done this, when they start doing, you say, shut up. The Lord rebuke you. What do they say? You've blasphemed the Holy Ghost. That's the unpardonable sin. Link for that in the description box. Okay. All right. Uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye have blasphemed the Holy Ghost. You are in danger of hell. Oh. No, it doesn't say that. It says, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. Let's read verse 15. These are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. This, it's a scare tactic that these devils will use, okay? The, the blaspheming of the Holy Ghost is only mentioned by the Lord Jesus Christ himself, by one individual, God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only one who mentions it, okay? Paul doesn't mention it, okay? Peter doesn't mention it. John doesn't mention it. Jude doesn't mention it. Whoever it was, we know the Lord is the author of the book of Hebrews. Whoever wrote Hebrews didn't mention it. The only one who mentioned the unpardonable sin, blasph blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He's the only one who mentioned it. Why? The only way you can blaspheme the Holy Ghost is when Jesus Christ is physically present. That's the only way. If you, my dear young hermetic uh, woman who, who asked me about that question and I answered you and you still don't want to accept that, that's your problem, you dear woman. Okay? All right? Blasphemy of the Holy Ghost only involves when Jesus Christ is physically present. When Jesus Christ is on the throne, that way is east, at Jerusalem, at his second coming, during the kingdom of heaven, you're going to have to worry about blaspheming the Holy Ghost because you're going to see him on the throne. Okay? Blaspheming the Holy Ghost is not a concern for us today. Okay? Get that through your head. If you don't want to accept that, that's your problem. Okay? That's your problem. All right? 
So when the charismatic devil says to you, you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, you're in danger of hellfire. No. No. You tell them to shut up. If you, if you ever encounter someone speaking in the... Blah, 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 you tell them to shut up. Seriously. Because like I've told you before, it seems that with these charismatic devils, you actually sometimes literally got to slap them really hard. Okay? You do. You do. You got to like, Bloop! jolt them. Okay? Like it says in the book of Jude. Like it says in the book of Jude. Okay? Uh, where is that? In the book of Jude. Uh, in the book of Jude, verses 22 and 23. And if some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Okay? Like I have said, with my personal experience with a lot of these charismatics, Pentecostals, whatever, whatever flavor of demonation they are, you got to hit them usually pretty hard. Okay? Now you got to remember, you got to remember the speaking with tongues was what? A part of the sign gifts onto the Jews. Because you read in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse, uh, verses 22 and verse 24, for after the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks, Gentiles, seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Now, in Revelation... In Revelation chapter 2, in Revelation chapter 2, verse 9, you read that, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. And those that hate the Jewish Hebraic people will twist that and whatnot to whatever, okay? Synagogue of Satan, okay? And also in Revelation chapter 3, verse 9, you see, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Catholics, who are our enemy. Um, Catholicism is our enemy. They teach replacement theology. They teach that the church buildings <laughs> have replaced the Jew. Okay? They teach replacement theology. Okay? Remember, Catholicism is Mystery of Babylon, the mother of harlots. It began in uh, Babylon. It was sorted out or whatever, defined in Egypt. It, it is perfected in Rome, okay? The Babylon, Babylonian religion is perfected in Rome, okay? But they teach replacement theology, okay? That Christians, and I'm not a Christian, have replaced the Jew, okay? The charismatic, who do not rightly divide the word of truth, they are against the redemption of the purchased possession. I have not met one charismatic Pentecostal, whatever flavor of demonate, demonation you are, I have not met one that uh, rightly believes the truth of the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? They believe, okay, they don't rightly divide the word of truth. They are against the redemption of the purchased possession. They are against eternal security. Okay? Eternal security. Once saved, always saved. Because what do they say? The Holy Ghost is upon me. And they say they verify that the Holy Ghost is upon them when they have they speak in their satanic blah 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 blah. blah, blah. Okay? Right? Three strikes you're out. 
They, because they are teaching people to look for signs. And Paul tells us, Paul, within the attributed Pauline epistles, specific doctrine for us today in this dispensation. Watch out for satanic coadjutor devils from the Northwest trying to tell you lies such as 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Part of it is doctrine for the time of Jacob's trouble. Watch out for devils like that and the Lord rebuke you, you devil. Okay? Same type of devils that tried to tell you Romans chapter 9, 10, and 11 are doctrinally for the time of Jacob's trouble. <clears throat> okay? No, no, no. Watch out for that. Okay? Charismatics are teaching a form of replacement theology because today we walk by faith. Not by sight. The sign unto the Jews today is to see their God, our Father, Jesus Christ, their God, their Father, their Mashiach, the Son of David, in us to make them jealous. That's their sign today. Okay? That's their sign. But in the first part of Acts, which was this dispensation, those sign gifts were there. To show them, hey, okay, the kingdom of heaven was put off. Okay, here's the kingdom of God, the gospel. In Acts chapter 7, Jewry in its entirety rejected it. And us Gentiles were grafted in in Acts chapter 8. Okay, and the sign gifts started to slowly diminish. And with the death of the apostles appointed by our Lord, they died out. Okay? Because if these people, like we talked about in the previous video, if these people actually did have the ability to heal, why aren't you in hospitals? Huh? Why aren't you curing people of cancer, leukemia, AIDS? Huh? Where are you? <coughs> filth. You filth. Okay? Give me a break. But see, because the charismatic faith, that umbrella term, is teaching you people to look for signs. Hence, the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. It's like that unfortunate poor soul that I used to know, who at one time I considered a friend, who believed that he saw Jesus Christ. You saw a devil. He doesn't watch me, and that's good. Good riddance. Okay? But he believed that he saw God. No! No! And no! Okay? See, in these charismatics, the Pentecostals and all the flavors of the demonations that teach you this stuff, they are trying to instill in you to look for signs and wonders. Today... There are no signs and wonders, okay? The sign gifts were there for the Jews in the first part of the book of Acts, and they died out with the apostles chosen by our Lord, okay? The sign gifts that you see in the book of Acts are not there today. They're not. And if they are like these guys claim they are, why aren't you in hospitals? Hmm? <coughs> you filth. You feel they're teaching you to look for signs and wonders when today we walk by faith, not by sight. So, you charismatic, what are your Pentecostal, apostolic, assemb assemblies of God, vineyard or whatever, whatever, even some Baptists and Methodists and even Catholics will speak in that satanic blah, 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 blah. And isn't it interesting that when you hear these people speaking in tongues, it's always or this But when you look at Acts chapter two, dear friend, uh, those were known languages. Those were known languages. And of course the excuses, well, they're forgotten languages. Shut up. No, they're not. You're a heretic, and you're deceiving people, okay? 
Now, let's go to Acts chapter 10, okay? And now, also too, the thing about the speaking with tongues, those were a sign gift unto the Jews. Already demonstrated it. The Jews require a sign, okay? When you read where it, they are speaking with tongues, Jews were always present, okay? And of course, these assemblies of God people, um, they, they will say, well, who knows if there are Jews present when we do this? And who knows with those devils when they'll go backstage and it's like, okay, they probably do stuff like this, okay? You do your tongue, and then I'm going to say that this is what you're going to be saying, or they wing it, okay? It's fake, because the Assembly of God guys, they'll have some guy talk like that, like he was Chevy Chase from the movie Caddyshack. Don't look that up, okay? And then he'll stand there and say, come some kind of a prayer, and then come up out of his own mind, or he's saying something or something or other. Okay, it's nonsense. Okay, but when you see the sign gift of speaking with tongues, Jews were always present. Let's prove it to you. Absolutely. Acts chapter 10. Cornelius chapter, Acts chapter 10, verses 44 on to verse 48. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision, the Hebrews, which believed were astonished. Now that, that's a no-brainer. The circumcision, the Hebrews, the Jews. Okay, give me a break. As many as came with Peter, because that on the gift uh, that, uh, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, and we addressed this in the previous video, okay, about the baptism and John and stuff like that. Watch the, the previous video, which will be in the description box. Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. In scripture, when it comes to water baptism, which is uh, a public profession of an inner conversion, okay? Acts chapter 8, verse 37, which the Bibles take out or put parentheses to, to do a yeah, how God said, okay? Um, when you look in scripture about people who are baptized, you do not see one time anyone being baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. There is only one name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved, the name of Jesus Christ, okay? So the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, okay? You know the Johannian comma? Yeah, yeah, that is, that defines the Godhead, okay? Spirit, soul, and body, the Holy Ghost, the, uh, the Father who is the soul, and the Word made flesh, okay? All right. <laughs> There's only one name. There's only one name. God, we are made in the image of God. You and I, even you wicked devils, you have a spirit, you have a soul, you have a body. So, baptized in the name of the Lord. You are baptized into the name Jesus Christ. You do not see anywhere in Scripture anyone being baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. There's only one name, okay? Why, why do you think the devil wants to take out and brings up even that, the Johannian comma, 1 John 5, 7? God is not triune. God is not three persons making one. Okay, that is satanic. Okay, but don't worry. You Christians that get left behind, you'll see your trinity, the devil, 
the beast, and the false prophet. Okay, you'll see your trinity. <coughs> I'm the trinity. Oh, <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. Take your trinity and wipe something off with it. But, okay, now verses 44 on to verse 48, you, you have to be stupid, willfully ignorant to say, okay, there, there were no Jews there. You, you'd have to. But here's the one where they get really clever. Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. Verses 1 on to verse 7. Acts chapter 19. Verses 1 on to verse 7. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coasts came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Now pay attention. Now see, one of these guys would come to hear and say, The only Jew, Hebrew, who was there was Paul. Okay? Pay attention to this. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Now, further questions about this, like I said, watch the previous video. Okay? The baptism of John was of heaven. Okay? In the authority of God. And John was baptizing people uh, with the baptism of uh, the remission of sins, baptizing them onto the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Identifying them onto the kingdom of heaven that was being offered unto them by our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Son of David, King of the Jews. Okay? Look at me. Look at me. Come here. The baptism of John was only a baptism identification onto the Hebraic Jewish people. We have already proved it. Okay? He was not sent but unto the lost sheep of Israel. Go not in the way of the Gentiles or the Samaritans, or, or in the Samaritans, but to the lost sheep of Israel. The baptism of John the Baptist was only unto the Hebraic Jewish people. So this verse here, verse 3, is a clue. Who were baptized onto John's baptism? Come on. I know you don't want to admit it because you want to cling onto your satanic devilish heresy that puffs up your flesh. But come on. Your argument has been defeated. The baptism of John was only onto the Jewish people. The baptism of John. The baptism of John. Today, we are baptized in water as a public profession because of an inner conversion. It is not a requirement for your salvation. As they teach in the catechism, which is pinned in the comments of the previous video, okay? Show you what the catechism says, okay? If you believe that water baptism is required for your salvation, you are a Catholic. You're a Catholic. Okay? Your mother is Rome. Your mother. Okay? Your mother is Rome. You're a Catholic. All right? But we see here in verse 3, this is a clue. Again, the baptism of John was only unto the Hebraic people. So, this gives us a clue then, doesn't it? If the baptism of John was only a baptism, which was the baptism of remission of sins onto the kingdom of heaven, which was only offered unto the Jews before the death, burial, and resurrection, so then what does John baptism signify? Come on, you can, you can say it. You can say it. You can say it, because... Your argument has been defeated, devil. But let's continue now. 
Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus, the son of David, king of the Jews. Offering the actual, physical, literal kingdom of heaven. Okay? When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Okay? And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them. Hmm, not because they were dunked in water. Hmm. And he laid there his hands on them. Another clue of a sign gift. And they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about so we have a lot of clues in Acts 19 verses 1 on to verse 7 that other than Paul there were at least more Hebrews there of that 12 perhaps maybe even all the 12 were Hebrews perhaps because if you read the book of Acts what did Paul do he went to the Jew first didn't he Okay, and Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. Okay, all right. Now, we don't know how, what of that 12 were exactly all Hebrews, but we have many clues and evidence within these seven verses that there were more than just Paul who were Hebrews there. Hence, speaking in tongues, excuse me, speaking with tongues. Sign gift for Jewish people. But now let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Several of you have requested an expository video on 1 Corinthians chapter 14. That would be monumental. The Lord has given bits and pieces for that, but has never said, okay, Brad, here you go. Actually, you could maybe consider this a reverse expository video on this, okay? Now, these charismatics will come to 1 Corinthians 14, okay? And just butcher this to defend their heresy. Now, let's read first in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 1 on to verse 7. Follow after charity which is self-sacrifice, and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. And see, the charismatic, because they are not rightly dividing the word of truth, they don't believe in security, uh, eternal security. Unto them the Holy Ghost comes and goes, comes and goes, as if they are still under the law. So a devil will come into these people and they'll actually get a feeling and you've seen people where they smack them on the head right here under the uh, hairline. There is a nerve there. If you strike it right, you can get someone to have their eyes roll back and they will get a, ten, a sensation in their body that feels like tingling. OK, even martial artists will attest to that. OK, but OK, prophesy. Prophesying. Prophesying for us today is someone who is filled with the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit, our Father, our God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost in me speaking to you through the authorized version of the scriptures, through the given by inspiration, perfect word of God. Okay. This today is prophesying. Okay. But see... The charismatic will take prophesying as giving extra scriptural revelation, things that are not in scripture and nine times out of ten are contrary to scripture and every single time are not rightly divided anyway. Okay, so that's another means how they deceive you. So prophesying is speaking the word of God through the Holy Ghost that dwells within the saved believer. That's prophesying for today in this dispensation. Because there is no new 
extra scriptural revelation, okay? It's been given. Here it is. The canon is finished. Okay? Now let's continue. For he, now, now right here, verse 2, is the closest that these devils will get. But the Bibles remove the unknown here and the italicized words, which again, our brother, my best friend, brother Alexander Hartley, did an incredible video about this, okay? The Bibles will remove here in verse 2, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God, okay? The Bibles that I looked at, uh, not all of them will remove an unknown tongue. I think the ESV keeps it. The non-King James Version keeps unknown, I think. But, you know, again, a majority of the Bibles, this is the scriptures, take out unknown. Okay? And even then, in an tongue, okay, that's the closest they get. Otherwise, it's with tongues. And the scripture says, in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth them, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. <laughs> Your prayer language, right? What a, what a ridiculous, heretical piece of nonsense. You're in prayer, and all of a sudden you start... You're praying, speaking unto the Lord, having a dialogue with the Lord, not a monologue, okay? You're having dialogue with the Lord, right, in prayer, and all of a sudden you're like, and you don't understand what you're saying, and it's like, well, that's my prayer language, and they come to this to justify it. But let's keep reading. And anyone who says about, well, it's my prayer language, it's like, well, you're speaking in the tongues of a devil. And you say it to that. Say it to them in that way. You're speaking in tongues of the devil. Okay? You are. Say it to them in tongues of the devil. Because the scriptures say with tongues. But see, they're speaking in tongues, remember? But the scripture says with tongues. And in order to justify them speaking in tongues, they inevitably have to go contrary to the scripture anyway. Verse 3. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. But he that prophesieth edifieth the church. Okay? And those are people, not them stupid buildings. Okay? So, and what happens when you talk to people who's like, well, in my prayer language, they use that as a, a badge of pride. Oh, what? You don't speak in tongues when you're praying? I speak with tongues in prayer, yes. The tongue of American English, yes. Okay? But in tongues, no. It's not speaking in tongues. Okay? They use it as a source of pride. I've encountered that. So have some of you. Okay? Now verse 5. I And this one here. I would that ye all speak with tongues. Okay? Other languages. Okay? Uh, remember, uh, uh, outside of America... Other nations, people of other tongues, can speak more than their native language. Like I said, our, our dear sweet young brother from Croatia, he can speak his native tongue and he can speak also American English. Okay? All right? Uh, uh, brethren from uh, Norway can speak their native tongue and American English. Okay? Canadians! Can, some of the Canadians can speak... Oh, France and American English. Okay? Unless you're out of America, it's not an uncommon thing to speak more. Uh, Hispanics! Even though, unfortunately, a lot of them like to play stupid as if they can't speak or understand. Hispanic people. They can speak the Hispanic 
tongue, they can speak uh, with their, their tongue, their tongues of the Hispanic people, the language of Spanish or whatever, okay? All right, and the language of American English, all right? It's when you come to us Americans. Yeah, yeah. But, verse 5, I would that ye all speak with tongues, with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. And therein I said, we already covered, like the assemblies of God, they'll have that guy or woman speaking in tongues, they're satanic, and then the, the schmuck up there will say, oh God, Lord, Jesus, Jesus, and then he'll come up with something off the top of his head. It's a, it's a sham, okay? It's a sham. Remember, these sign gifts for, were for the Jews, and Paul was still alive, and John the Apostle was the last of the God-chosen apostles to die, okay? So the sign gifts were still there. They were diminishing, but they were still there, okay? Now, brethren, if I come on to you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you? except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine. Okay? And things without life, giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sound. Hence, Languages. Remember the analogy given to me by my best friend, our brother, Alexander B. Hartley. Cars. There are all kinds of cars, but one's a Ford and one's a Chevy. Is that distinction? Distinction. Languages. Distinction. Okay. And even things without life having sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harped? And yet these charismatics, they say, well, I don't know what was being said. That's my prayer language. The Spirit knows what I'm saying. That ain't the Spirit of God. Okay? Prove it to you. Okay. We're going to skip a little here in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Let's go now to verse 14 on to verse 28. When you are in prayer, with our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Um, if you were to speak with an unknown tongue, let's, verse 14 on to verse 28. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my lowercase s, spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. You devils say, well, that's my prayer language. Okay. So you don't know what you said. No, that's my prayer language. But my understanding is unfruitful. So wait, you're going to tell me that in prayer, the Lord doesn't want you to know what you are saying? In prayer, where you have that fellowship, that communion with the Lord, and he's okay with you not knowing what's going on? Yea, had God said! And what happens? These people with their, stupi their stupidity, their prayer language, well, that's my prayer language. It's pride. And it's contrary to Scripture. Keep reading. What is it then? I will pray with the lowercase s spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. I've seen these videos of the, like there was this woman who was singing in that singing like that. It was... I, I, I didn't even watch a minute. It was, it's like, 
Wow. Okay. Some of you like when I when I have sang hymns, some of you are like, "Oh, Brad, that's fine." But when you come across one of these, and they're out there, these people that sing in tongues, it's atrocious. It's atrocious. But look at that verse again. What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit, lowercase s, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit, lowercase s, and I will sing with the understanding also. Verse 16, else when thou shalt bless with the lowercase s spirit, how shall he that occupieth the room of the unlearned say amen at thy giving of thanks, seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest? <laughs> For thou verily givest thanks well, but the other is not edified. I thank my God. I speak with tongues more than ye all. Yeah, oh, sure. Oh, sure. Paul spoke Greek. He spoke Hebrew. Uh, probably spoke Latin. Uh, who knows how many uh, languages uh, in the tongues of those nations that Paul could speak. Who knows? Okay? At least three. Hebrew, you learn about that. He spake unto them in the Hebrew tongue, saying, men and brethren. Okay? Uh, he spake Greek. He probably spake Latin, okay? So yes, Paul spake with tongues, okay? Yet, verse 19, in the church, the body, not the phallus house buildings, I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice... I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. So when you come to this nonsense of your prayer language, you don't know what's being said. And what we are seeing here in scripture, uh, the Lord through Paul is telling you, no, when you're having a dialogue with the Lord, you are to know what you are saying. Okay. All right. You are to know what you are saying. Our Lord wants you to have understanding of what is being said in your dialogue with the Lord. Okay? So when you come upon this, well, that's my prayer language, and you're, you're supposedly praying to the Lord, and all of a sudden you're like uh, saying whatever, and then all of a sudden you're like, blah, 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 da, da, da. that's not of God, that's of the devil. You're not praying to the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. You're praying to the devil. Why? Because the Lord wants you to understand what you're saying. The Lord wants open communication with other brethren. Okay? Not this mystery. And these charismatic Pentecostal devils, when they start their satanic blah, 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 stuff, it's all a thing of pride. Oh, he's filled with the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost has come upon him. It's like, shut up. The Lord rebuke you, you devil. Okay? They're blurring it, brethren. You, charismatic, Pentecostal, with your satanic tongue talking, it's a badge of pride onto you, and it's contrary to the scriptures. The Lord rebuke you. Okay? Now let's continue. Verse 20. Brethren, be not children in understanding. Howbeit in malice be ye children, but be but in understanding be men. It is in the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. And yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. We already addressed that in the uh, earlier parts of this video. Okay? I'm of the church of the living God, and I go talk to a Christian, okay? I'm speaking with tongue with the tongue of American English. I'm speaking with my tongue, the language of American English. They speak American English as well. We speak the same language, but they can't understand what I'm saying because the spirits don't identify. Okay? We've already addressed this. Let's continue. <clears throat> Wherefore, and they seem to conveniently skip this one. 
Wherefore tongues are for a sign. Not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. And then what does the charismatic say to you, Church of the Living God? Well, then you must not be saved because you can't speak with tongues or speak in tongues. You don't understand what I'm saying. Shut up. The Lord rebuke you. You can go to hell. Okay? Verse 22. It's a sign gift. And the Jews require a sign. And the church of Corinth were Jews and Gentiles. Okay? Paul was still alive at the writing of this. John, the last of the, the very last of God chosen apostle. Okay? And with him dying out, the sign gifts went away eventually. The sign gifts started to diminish, even in Paul's time, because that one guy in Melitum that he uh, left sick, he didn't heal him. And then, like we addressed in the previous video, these devils say, well, he didn't have enough faith. Shut up! Wherefore, tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not them that believe not, but for them which believe. Because the Spirit's identified. If therefore the whole church be come together into one place, the whole church, the whole body, come together in one place, okay? Not the building. Church there is talking about the body, the people, okay? Again, another good video done by our brother, my best friend, Alexander B. Hartley. He goes through the thing about churches. Brother, you're going to make it this far. If I forget to put it in the description box, put it in the comment section, okay? If therefore the whole church be come together into one place and all speak with tongues and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say that ye are mad? It's a sign for those who don't believe, okay? But they come in there and see like, these guys are all mad. Uh, you remember what happened in Acts chapter 2 where they said these guys are full of new, uh, new wine, Okay. And then Peter's like, you blaspheme the Holy Ghost? No, he didn't say that. Okay? Yeah. It's like, wow, these guys are crazy. It's a sign for those who don't believe. Okay? And the Jews require a sign. Let's continue. But if all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is judged of all, meaning someone who isn't of the church of the living God will hear brethren, uh, you know, prophesying, speaking, word of truth through the Holy Ghost. The Lord is that spirit. That's what prophesying is today. They're like, wow, that I'm not one of them. Wow, I'm, I'm not one of them. They're, look at that. Look at that. I, I'm not of them. You see? You see how that works? And thus the secrets of his hearts of his heart is made manifest. It's another good way to tell those who are fallen away, who were never of us of the first place. We spoke the same language, but yet you didn't understand what I was saying. You throw the same back at me. But then again, I'm not the one saying that Paul was writing doctrine for the time of Jacob's trouble, you wicked devil! But, right there, verse 25, And thus the secrets of his heart are made manifest, not of us. See? And so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. Remember in Acts 19, the sons of Sceva? When those, uh, the sons of Sceva were taking upon themselves to uh, preach unto them, that Jesus that Paul preached and the devil that was in that guy said, uh, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are ye? You get it? How is it then, brethren, when ye come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. 
If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. Okay? But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church, and let him speak to himself and to God. Okay? So, here in verse 27 and 28, you got to remember, Paul was still alive. Okay, the sign gifts which were diminishing were still there because at the time of this writing, um, probably I don't know what the number of them were, but the uh, God chosen apostles were still alive. Okay, so the sign gifts were diminishing but not totally extinguished. And of the church, the body that was at Corinth were of Jew and Gentile. Okay, you got to remember that. All right. And verse 39, where Paul says, Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy, and forbid not to speak with tongues. Okay? And like I said, the speaking with tongues was a sign gift unto the Jewish people, which is not here for us today. And it is most definitely not at all what these Pentecostal charismatic devils want you to believe. Okay? So, and also, people, you read 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Prophesying, speaking through the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit, Okay, speaking to you from the scriptures, the Lord in me speaking to you through the scriptures, the revealed, given by inspiration, perfect, inerrant word of God, the authorized version. Okay, that is prophesying today. And that is preferred above speaking with tongues. Okay, and besides... The gift of speaking with tongues was a sign gift. We already saw it. And you got to remember, Paul was still alive at this time. So were, I'm reckoning, a majority of the apostles. Okay, the God-chosen apostles. Okay? So, the gift of speaking with tongues was a sign gift. And the Jews require a sign. And today, the sign unto the Jews is them seeing their God in us. Okay? So, people, the satanic, devilish thing that the charismatics Pentecostal, apostolic Pentecostals, the assemblies of God, the vineyard, the, the, uh, some Methodists, some Baptists, some Catholics that do this. Blah, 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 da, 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 da. That's of Satan. It is not of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? The sign gifts of Acts were there for signs unto the Jews. And after Acts chapter 7, they started to diminish. And the sign gifts are not there today. The stuff that you hear from these wicked charismatics is of the devil, not of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So, that is going to be it for this video. Thank you again unto uh, my brethren, our brethren, for the... Uh, help and the beautiful moment that we had together where the four of us uh, were able to get this and look <laughs> brother see how much more cleaner it is <laughs> so um, that's going to be it for this video going to get this video uploaded you have questions uh, check out the links in the description box um, and if you don't want to hear the truth that's your problem Please continue to pray for us. Pray for one another. 
There are certain brethren that I did not get a hold of last week, and I'm sorry. Um, also, my health personally has been kind of iffy the past week, but praise the Lord, it's getting on track. And also, another brother asked a wonderful question about um, single mothers, single parents, which is taking on something else, which, uh, which will be done probably on the backup channel. Um, but um, thank you. <laughs> thank you, brethren. Thank you for those of you who pray for us. Thank you for all your help. We love you. And um, thank, for, thank you for watching this if you do. I will see you in the next video.